welcome to the Nest Productions Infinity War Review. I'm Ryan. I'm Sean. It's finally here. I finally saw it. I'm a little... I got a little late to the party. Uh, but, yeah. I was going to say it's a... Sean saw it three times before he went to see it with me. It's been a... Like a solid two weeks. <laughs> a minute that we've even recorded. Yeah. Together. Yeah, we we were gonna record the uh, I was gonna NPTV. Ask. Oh yeah, but a lot of people had we had some scheduling issues. I was gonna ask you since the last time we were together, is there anything of significance that has happened? Uh, I, I went camping. <laughs> I went camping. I haven't done that in ages because my mom, mo- my mom, uh, her idea of camping isn't what my idea of camping is, so I avoided it for a long time. <laughs> She'd come home. All right, we're going camping. All right, where? We'll figure it out. All right, what do we have? Sleeping bags. Uh, what about food? Oh, we'll worry about food when we're hungry. <laughs> we're camping. Uh, oh, man, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mom. This this rocky riverbed is super comfortable. <laughs> I don't mind the bugs landing on my fa- face and drinking all of my blood. It's great. Great time. Oh, no, I'm not cold. We didn't bring any wood for fire, and it's, you know, fall. I You know, I realized years later what we were doing. Pretty sure she was avoiding the landlord. (laughs) No, but, yeah, I went camping this last weekend, and I had a pretty good time. Uh, I was a little disappointed, though, in one thing. Uh, I was told I could find poison ivy in the woods. Uh, after like an hour of searching, no sexy super villain, and all I had was an itchy red rash. <laughs> That's a joke, people. It's a joke. Oh, God. Leaves of three, let them be. Uh, unless they're on, on Poison Ivy's chest. Oh, all right. Well, this was the Infinity War podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, she's not... She died in the movie, uh, yeah. Her and Batman, right after they blew up the Death Star. Yep, yep, that's it. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Uh, as you can see, my notes over here. I, I titled my notes: "Evil California Raisin Kills Everyone." Unless you put it up, sir. They're not. They can't see it. <laughs> Fuck them. They, they got imaginations. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, our, our loving, beautiful fans. Fuck them. <laughs> no, I'm so, wow. <laughs> I say that to my best friends, so don't worry about he's, it. Uh, like, he, he's reeling from what he saw yesterday. <laughs> he's I, in mourning I still. almost stormed out of the theater. <laughs> it was towards the end, but still. Oh. Uh, so, you know all those predictions we've been making for the past year? They were wrong. Mm-hmm. We were wrong. And, uh, we're, well, we're wrong so far. There's still another movie. It's fun to speculate, though. Yes. It is fun. Who knows? Maybe, maybe you know, the second one rolls around and it turns out we were right. Well. Or maybe they offered them a bunch more money and they re-upped their contracts. <laughs> I was just talking about us, you know. Even a blind squirrel can get a nut once in a while. <laughs> We'll speculate and bound to get something right. Eventually. So we'll just be like, we're right! <laughs> I was right about one thing. You were. You were a couple things, actually. Uh, in Ragnarok, Thor lost his hammer, but I knew there was another hammer out there. And that hammer's name was... Stormbringer. Storm... Breaker! Stormbreaker. And they brought it into this. I was very surprised. Uh, see, there's a lot. If you go back to speaking and, of Ragnarok, and how they got it, at least in Ragnarok, there was that there are a lot of Beta Ray Bill, yeah, teasing, yeah, because he's the one with Stormbreaker. Yeah, he he's the one that originally has Stormbreaker. But no Beta Ray Bill. No, <laughs> just teasing. Who knows? I have to say, I like it a lot better than Mjolnir. Yeah. Because it's a freaking axe and like, a hammer. I'd like it better if he had both. <laughs> I'm speculating. He's going to have both. <laughs> yes, he's going to magically fix the old one. 
Actually, yeah, yeah, it's probably going to magically fix the old one. <laughs> yep. Um, so what did you think of the movie? It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really good. Uh, it was really good. It was also kind of heartbreaking. Um, I'll tell you what, though. They did not mess around too much with the story. They There was not, like, useless filler. It was all very important. And, uh, wow, we were we wrong about the Soul Stone? That was, yeah, that was another thing I was way, way off about. By the way, all right, uh, we haven't really given anything away other than Storm, okay, uh, I'm gonna, re- <laughs> later when I'm editing it, this is more of a note to myself, I'm gonna put over a voiceover that says, spoiler warning, during the, in- before the intro, so if that was put up. Good job, me. You're awesome. Use the time stone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You should have, hopefully, if I did my job, I might not have, who knows, uh, gotten your spoiler warning earlier. Because there's going to be a bunch of spoilers. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, the first, not even the first week, it hit $1.8 billion dollars. Which set one of the many records it set, which we knew it would. Hey, that's one thing we did get right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go out and say anybody listening to this probably has seen it. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean. Well, then again. Yeah, you're right. Some of our listeners, they'll listen to the, the episodes before they actually watch the movie. True, true. Um, but yeah, they, they didn't mess around a whole lot with the story. There wasn't like useless filler. They just like got in, like they picked up right where they left off after Ragnarok. Oh yeah. Like right there. I was very impressed with that. Like to the point where they didn't even do the, the usual intro, the Marvel intro with the yeah. music and everything there. It was like distress call and, and yeah. they were talking and there was like, and you just showed the Marvel thing. And we finally got to see that scene where Thor is slapped onto the guardian's windshield that was a end credit scene like in what movie that was a throwback to the introduction of him and jane foster if you think about it the very first thor oh yeah when he got hit by the car (laughs) that was like there was tons of throwbacks and and little nods to things whether it be comics the old movies that's what i love about this movie it's like if you've never read a comic or seen or even seen any of the other movies you could kind of watch Infinity War and still enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, standalone, the Avengers uh, and Marvel movies are good on their own. Like, and they give you enough information when needed for you to kind of just get the story without having to watch all the other ones. This, it kind of reminds me, okay, so it amazes me. Let me see if I can get through this as quickly as possible. The fact that they were able to take 18 movies and 10 years and tie it all into, like, it's basically an annual. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're buying comics, this would be the annual crossover. Yeah. Like they used to do, the big giant size issue. And balance all these characters off one thing. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, I'd say the first half hour first 40 minutes you're you're not um spending time with these characters that we know and love yeah you're bouncing them on. this is thanos's movie we're following thanos yeah thanos is the star of this movie yeah and his quest and then all the other characters that they've built up it's like they all get to shine as they bounce off thanos so uh thanos is from titan and uh he's called the mad titan and and in the movie, uh, he's called the Mad Titan because uh, his planet was near the brink of destruction. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they were running, burning through all of their resources. The planet was grossly, op- grossly overpopulated. Huh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> right. Uh, and he was like, if we get rid of half of our population, rich, poor, weak, strong, just half at random, we will save our planet. And they were like, dude, you crazy. Get out of here. And they kicked him out. <laughs> uh, which is pretty different from how... Uh, and then and so he wants to 
and then after that happened, he uh, his planet was destroyed, and he's like, all right, I'm going to do this for the entirety of the universe and galaxies and whatnot. <laughs> the ultimate humanitarian. <laughs> yes. Uh, humanitarian, genocide, you know, whatever. Hey, some would say Hitler was the same way. <laughs> you know, most, pe- most uh, people known for their mass genocides uh, and deaths involved in them, they all have a uh, defining feature. Hitler had a mustache. Stalin had a mustache. <laughs> Thanos has a weird chin. <laughs> I think he should grow a mustache, though. Over his chin? Over his chin. <laughs> like a groucho mock. Maybe, maybe he could join the goatee bros. <laughs> yes. Stark and uh, strange. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the bickering goatee bros. <laughs> I did like that, that, that combo, though. Yeah. Yeah, that back and forth. Well, that was a lot of things, too. There was, um, um, because I, 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 I made a little list for myself about, like, with a movie this big, it could have went horribly wrong yeah. at the same time. Like, uh, bear with me here, folks. Let me just give you an example. Like, the first problem that could have happened was the number of characters. Yeah. Are super high. What is there, like, 30 some odd characters or whatever Mm -hmm. the solution they made every introduction humorous and funny yeah and memorable like doesn't matter what it was it's really all right so i think that really comes back down to the success of guardians of the galaxy that was the first of the Marvel movies that had a more humorous tone to it right well there's always been jokes since the first iron man you know but but like the Guardians of the Galaxy is one where they, they, they sprinkled a bit more humor on it. Okay. And then Guardian, that was my movie was a success. Guardians 2 was a success. And you, and then you had uh, what, Watiti, the guy that directed Ragnarok. Ragnarok. And he just, he didn't just sprinkle funny. <laughs> he, he dumped the whole bag of sugar funny in there. And it was a riot and it was fantastic. And it played... I think it's like developed into Thor's character now. Actually, you know, in a way, Thor's always been the oh it, yeah the funniest yeah, because like, he's kind of oblivious to culture. Go back to the first movie, and, but yeah, yeah uh, they they added a lot more humor over the past couple of years, and it's been a huge success, especially when you are comparing it to Marvel's competitor, where they've done the opposite, and yeah. and. It's like, oh, I'm having a great old time. Oh, yeah, there were some jokes. Some of them forced. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But then you're looking at, hey, Batman don't kill. <laughs> the He's fuck way I, too dark. The fuck I don't. <laughs> oh, shit. Another problem that could have happened. Um, now, you could answer this question better than anybody. Now, think back to... Man, Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. The end scene with Zod and Superman, the big fight. Yeah. Um, the one movie when they do the Marvel movie marathons, the one that everybody seems to want to skip was the Incredible Hulk with Abomination. I like that fight one. That, so do I. The, but the fight there. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have like, uh, again, like you said, Justice League with Steppenwolf. Mm-hmm. Like people don't want the CGI um, fights. Yeah. Or the, the villains seem, it, it's, it's hard to make a CGI villain scary. Yeah. So, Again, Marvel, their solution is acknowledge it and move on with the story. Mm -hmm. I.e., like you said, Peter Quill, (laughs) Star-Lord with the... uh, I'm going to shoot that nutsack right off your face. Right off your... That's a line of dialogue. I'm (laughs) going to shoot that nutsack right off your chin. chin. Yeah, and he called him Grimace. Yeah. (laughs) Because there was so many stuff... There was so much memes. Yeah. Well, like, that's (laughs) partly because of... uh, of, uh, how old Star Lord is, and his last introduction to human pop culture. Right, right, right. He but, was he was a child at the height of the McDonald's character era. But at the same time, think how genius that is with that character saying that to that character, who everybody else, all the you know, the internet critics are yeah. making fun of. You know, <laughs> they acknowledge it, cut it off, <laughs> and then keep moving on with the story. <laughs> the. Uh, Another problem I had is, uh, yeah, like I said, with the Man of Steel and everything, 
against CGI. CGI and CGI on CGI fights. Yeah. Like with the Man of Steel. I mean, it's very video gamey. It's mm-hmm. like, why did I yeah, pay money to see this movie? I, I could just go home and play video games. Play a video game. Better graphics. Better graphics, and you could enjoy it longer. They cut it off real quick. Like, first two minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. Hulk versus Thanos. Who would win? Boom. It lasted. It was the first two minutes of the movie, and it lasted a third minute. Especially when you saw the fact that we saw Hulk. He came in. It's like, oh, yeah, here's the Hulk. And then when Thanos finally, remember, let him have his fun. Mm-hmm. And he came back and he did that first punch. It looked like you and your friends hanging out and your one friend hit you a little too hard. Hulk's like, hey. <laughs> and then he beat the shit out of the Hulk. Done. Boom. He's gone. We don't see the Hulk for the rest of the movie. Spoilers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold I, I was... <laughs> uh, what, what were we talking about? Where, uh, oh, yeah, the uh, the Venom trailer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the new Venom movie. Here's the new Venom movie's trailer. No Venom. No Venom. Not a single, like, after the beginning, there was no real Hulk. There were a couple of uh, of times where Banner tried to get the Hulk to come out. But, again, with humor, they summed it up yeah. with a... Uh, I, I've heard about performance issues, Banner, but uh, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. <laughs> you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. <laughs> and that's not... A lot of people I saw were, were talking about how, okay, after that first you know, right opening part of the movie, mm-hmm. Hulk's afraid of Thanos. He's not afraid of Thanos. It's a story arc that started in Ragnarok. Yeah. And it, it uh, keeps going in this one, and it's going to conclude in the second part. Yeah. Like, uh, Thor wanted to stay on Battleworld and be, you know... This well-respected gladiator, and but then you know Banner was like, oh, "Let's get out of here." Which you kind of see the 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 story arc within the story arc where like he's controlled, like they're both in control, but don't want the other one around. Yeah, almost like a Siamese twin that just hates each other <laughs> type thing. And yeah, he's like a, a he was a rock star. He had a penthouse. He was the king. He was left alone. He didn't have to deal with Puny Banner. Hulk was... I mean, they were having parades for him. Yeah. And then he got pulled... So he's basically... He's not afraid of Thanos. He's like a little kid pouting and doesn't want to come out of his room. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and Thanos kicking his ass was just salt on the wound. I don't think... See, Hulk really, as the Hulk, he doesn't but really just, care about shit. Well, like I'm just, just think he's, he's already in a bad mood. He, he, he just, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He just lost, you know, the prime of his life. And then... You're having the worst day of your life, and some guy kicks your ass. You're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm 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 gonna stay by myself for a little while. I I just don't want to deal with you or anyone. Maybe with that midget in Mexico, that one <laughs> <laughs> hasn't been to Mexico since no. or drank tequila. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the things that surprised me in this movie. Uh, one, Peter Dinklage. I knew he was going to be in this. I just did not fucking know he was going to be, uh, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Idri. Yeah, I- Idri. I- yeah. Uh, I did not see that coming. I did not see him as the mythical dwarf that created Thor's hammer. Uh, holy cow. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thor's hammer, Loki's staff, Odin's staff. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the bed that, when he does the Odin sleep. Like, he's pretty much, all the dwarves were tasked. Yeah. For creating weapons for Asgard yeah. and all the other realms, mm-hmm. and then unfortunately we saw what a uh... <laughs> he, he, spoiler alert: he made the gauntlet for Thanos, mm-hmm. and it didn't end well for him or the other dwarves because Ooh. there are no more other dwarves now, and his hands are solid metal. They belong to Thanos. Bummer. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and oh my goodness, the biggest surprise we knew it was coming eventually, but to actually see it on screen, the red skull. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. The look Holy on your face. Crap. I was like, you, I'm sure Sean heard me a couple of times in the movie. I was like, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Well, there, like I said, or like you said, I've, I've seen the movie three, four. four times before you and I saw it yesterday. Yeah. And, like, I knew what was coming up, and I'd just look over at you. <laughs> You're like, oh, jeez. It was funny, though, because I love the hood and everything. Mm-hmm. It, it was kind of another nod to the comics as death. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, actually, that, that brings up... Uh, 
I'll, I'm gonna let you talk for a bit. I'm, I'm burning through my list of uh, notes, real, real fast. Oh, for um, okay. Yeah, what are what are you? What are some of your thoughts? I mean, I still have some other other I... stuff. I mean, seriously, I would not have guessed any of those en- uh, end movie deaths at all. We'll get we'll get to those. Uh, as if people don't already know. Uh, we could talk about how the armors worn by Stark and Spider Man. That surprised me the first time I saw it because that's I, current. Yeah, the bleeding edge. The armor. bleeding edge armor. It's nanotech. It is his most current and like most one of his most powerful armors yet. Uh, it was pretty dope in the movie. I was really impressed. That is the most impressive thing they've done with uh, with uh, Iron Man's armor yet. That I like all the Iron Man. I was a huge. I've always been an Iron Man fan, and the jokes, of course, and and the the moments like uh, speaking of armor. You just want him as a drinking buddy. The. Uh, I, <laughs> Two demons if in you bottle, think please. You, <laughs> if you think you could keep up. Hey, I have the heart for it. <laughs> that's, Does he? That's sick. As long as he's buying. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get the, the good vodka for once. I, I'm a bottom shelf guy. Iron Spider. Speaking yes, of, the of Iron armor, Spider. Oh, uh, that was great. The they movie, really they, they changed the look of it quite a bit. For the better, in a way, for as far as the you know the silver as the big screen goes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it though. Yeah, it was I, that one that they teased at the end, where actually at the end of Homecoming, yeah. that he turned down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really, really. Uh, so they're they're on this alien the alien ship going through to Titan, and <laughs> Spider Man shows up after the big space after threat. after Iron Man tries to send him home, <coughs> and he's like, "What are you doing oh. here?" I told you to leave. Well, I'm, I, 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 it's start. It's it's the suit's awesome. It's really intuitive. So it's kind of your fault in a way. You're the one who put it. The on fuck me? you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say the fuck, but he might as well have. Oh god! Right when you said that. Seriously, like Stark treats Peter like a son. Like like that's. You, did you just back talk, Mister? That's the thing I picked up as far as like. See, I'm talking about like as a writer. Yeah. Think about it. He treated him. Like, he's in Civil War, mm-hmm. in Homecoming. He's, like, his kid. Yeah. To the point where, at one scene, there was a line of dialogue where Doctor Strange is like, is this your ward? Yeah. And let's go back to the beginning. Where he's where talking to Pepper, Pepper. And they're talking about having a kid. Yeah. Literally. Which, by the way, there was another comic nod. They're like, uh, Morgan. In the comics, that's his evil cousin. Mm-hmm. Which goes back to Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. But I... I an old man like me would get that. <laughs> but, which made the that one scene at the end even more heartbreaking because yeah. that's his kid, man. Yeah. <laughs> you that's know? His, it's like, <laughs> like... Like, Spider-Man is his Robin, basically. Yeah, that's the best much, way to describe yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, God. Yeah, I, I, I had to fight back tears at the end. No, you didn't. I saw tears. <laughs> well, if you think about it, like I said, like I was well, saying earlier. Well, after we left and I was driving by myself, you don't know what happened. Josh was like, Josh gets in the car. I'm like, and he's like, what's wrong with you? What's all this Kleenex doing? <laughs> uh, I was, I was baiting, I was bait driving. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was doing. Bait I wasn't driving. crying. I wasn't crying. You were master driving. Master driver. I'm a master driver. Ooh, fancy. But that's the thing. I mean, if you think of it, like I was saying earlier. So... If you're not picking up on what we're putting down, uh, Thanos wins at the end and kills a bunch of people. One of those people being Spiderman. Spiderman? Can you... I, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a listener to us. They're like, what the fuck are they talking about? I know it's Infinity War, <laughs> but I cannot get an idea for the plot points. They're not telling it in order. Orders are for pussies. That's why we just say spoilers at the beginning. Yeah, we're just like, we're assuming alert. you've seen the movie. Uh, if you haven't, you can listen, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, we did just spoil the very, I did just spoil the very end so I could talk about it. All right, let's, I, I, I've got a right, list you go, right here. You go, you go. I've got a list right here. I'm still in mourning. I'm still in mourning. <laughs> All right, but like I was saying earlier, it is Thanos' movie. Because if you go back to like the first Avengers, mm-hmm. you saw him for a second. 
if you go back to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you saw a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Age of Ultron, the end credit scene where he got the gauntlet. Yeah. You know, and then we find out later, it's like, whoa, I thought fucking Thanos got that gauntlet. It's in uh, Odin's uh, keepsake area. It's a fake. <laughs> you know, he put the fake in there. Fake. Yeah. Um, this was, it, it, people, you know, again, like we were talking about at the beginning, where it's like, you could watch this movie and never see the other ones, but, you know, the people who have watched it but never read comics or anything, like, who was this grimace purple nutsack chin looking guy? Well, you found out big time. Yeah. I mean, we were following his story, and again, like I said, from a writer's point of view, that's the only way you can juggle all these characters. It's the only way. It's a tragic story. It's like, very Shakespearean, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, if, um, I feel like anyone, like, I would say the most popular series in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for general public views is Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't met many people that aren't, that are, uh, like one of my coworkers at work, she loved the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. <laughs> she watches the other movies when I, you know, when she gets a chance. Uh-huh. But th- th- she's... She's like most of the other general populace, and they're like, ooh, I am Groot. Groot is so cute. Which, I'm not saying in a bad way. Oh, no, not at all. But uh, people, general people, like normal, everyday movie goers are like, wow, I really liked Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, So they, for the most part, know who Thanos is due to the Guardians, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but that was I mean, what I'm saying is though. Yeah, you saw that little bit mm-hmm. of stuff, and they established uh, the relationship between Thanos, the Kree, Gamora, and Nebula. Yeah, you know what I mean. But oh no, I I totally agree with you. I was like, I remember when they first announced Marvel's doing a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I'm like, are you? Kidding? They're not even trying anymore. <laughs> They're just like, here, hold my beer, watch this. You know, they all sit around and get drunk and be like. We're going to taste the worst property in many of the comic books and make a billion dollars. James Gunn made, I said it when it first came out. I watched that movie. I come out and I'm like, he just made the today's Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, I, it's I, like, I've, heard that. I've heard a lot of people make that comparison. It's, it, it was fun. And but it I, was I, good. at this point, I'd say Infinity War is the new today's Star Wars. Well, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Thank God we don't have to wait three years, right? The past ten years of Marvel movies was the new Star Wars, and then this was the Empire Strikes... The annual Empire Strikes so, Back. So Sean's old, right? <laughs> he saw Empire Strikes Back... 1980. In 1980. How many years did you have to wait for the next one? Three years. Three years? Because George Lucas had this thing. 77 was Star Wars. 80. And then 83 was Return of the Jedi. And then after that, there was the dark times, as they call it, which all he was doing was uh, trying to renegotiate the uh, his deal with Kenner for the toys, mm-hmm. letting it run out. That this is the boring business part of it, because at the time he negotiated the deal for merchandising, which no movie had ever done any merchandising on. Yeah. It. Um, somehow, uh, George Lucas and Fox worked out a deal where they split a nickel for everything sold, mm-hmm. and Kenner got the rest. That's why it goes from 83 and then 99 when Phantom Menace came out. <laughs> he was working out that deal. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, now I'm just picturing you, like, like waiting, like, 20 years for oh, yeah. another Star Wars movie, and it was, it you're was... like, where's Darth Vader? Well, no, for me... Like, the first, like, five, ten minutes, you're like... Then they're like, oh... By the way, this is Anakin. And you're like, I'm just imagining like that, that moment where you're like, No. That little shit, Darth Vader. See, that, that didn't bother me at all. because Not, I, not that it bothered you, right, but right. like, like, it, like it, it twisted your head <laughs> a little bit. as you waited 20 years. Because I read the 20 years, I'd read like book after book after book. Comic just kept and book Comics and, and books and stuff. And watching it, but seeing, yeah, you're right, seeing yeah. it on screen, I was like, all right, now, now everybody, we're going to have to wait after the next Marvel movie. We're going to wait 20 years. and <laughs> No, it's only a year. <laughs> Thank goodness. And we have stuff in between there. Like... Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp. July 6th. 
Uh, it's not necessarily a Marvel movie, but Deadpool 2 comes out soon. Saying it. Um, Let's, uh, hmm. I did have the list for those uninitiated. If you, if you lost track, which that was another thing too, which I said people could watch this movie and the humor that Marvel does. Yeah. Not forced jokes, but just like little things where people, even though if they haven't seen any of the past 10 years or maybe missed some mm-hmm. here and there. Spider-Man was your tour guide, if you think about it, because remember when they were on Titan and they were saving and he was like, gotcha, gotcha. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I can't remember everybody's name. <laughs> and he's just like helping everybody. He's yeah. like, gotcha, gotcha. And he's shooting the webs and he's bringing them back down because they're floating off after yeah. Thanos threw the moon at Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. You know, during that scene, I was thinking of something. I think not just anyone could be Spider-Man. Because I, I really started to think about it. And I know he's got the spider sense and all that. And like Which good awesome. kinesthetic abilities. Yeah, that first scene where you saw his hair They finally up. acknowledged it. When I, when I made acknowledge it, they showed. Yeah. Like they didn't do it in Civil War. They didn't do it in Homecoming. <laughs> but like, I think you have to have a high, like a, a very powerful brain to be Spider-Man. Think of how many like micro calculations his brain is doing a second to like just to swing building to building and catch someone without snapping their neck. I mean, he had to learn that part quick. I mean, you, you do it once. You snap someone's neck from a falling building once. You got to learn quick. Well, I'm just going to tell you something that I want to see if Logan's listening. My son was here visiting. And it's funny you mentioned that because you just reminded me. We were outside in the back and with the weather becoming nice, there's a lot of yellow jackets and they're building nests. Mm-hmm. And I had swatted one just out of the air because yeah. it was coming right at me. And just coming right at me. But yeah, just by luck, it happened to land right in the corner where the back door is. Mm-hmm. And it was still alive. I just stunned it. Yeah. But right as it landed, it was like it just it just touched the ground. Yeah. And the spider shot out from underneath the house and grabbed it <laughs> and brought it back in and started webbing it. And yeah. then there was, this, little, I think he took pictures because Yellow Jackets, they got he was stingers sting and biters. And bite. Yeah. And then the spider would come back, come back down and you could see him shooting webs. Mm-hmm. And like, he was about ready to sting. And that's when the spider would leave. Like, I'm like, this is a real spider sense going on right here. He knew the stinger was coming. <laughs> and Logan was trying to like video or take pictures and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, that's cool, man. <laughs> that's real life. I'm like, you and I could be Spider Man. I couldn't have to. I'm a fucking idiot. But you'd have the spider capabilities. You'd have the sense. It's almost like precognitive, like the force. You just see it before it happens. But Deadpool, or not Deadpool, Deathstroke, he's like pre he can see stuff moments before they happen. The Force, <laughs> pretty much. Well, Deathstroke is something of a genius, so his is more of a... All right, you know what, I'm just trying to like make an argument here. <laughs> Death, Deathstroke's more of a, uh, a calculated experience. So it's not so much that he's precognitive, it's just that he's an experienced veteran with heightened senses. <laughs> God, we are nerds. Can't answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's someone here precognitive. His ears are burning. His ears his, are burning. His Logan sense was tingling. It was. It was. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned one... Nerds, you I, mentioned one thing of Deathstroke, and I'm like, no, 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 man. He's not precognitive. He's just like, just got like... <laughs> well, they started out talking about Infinity War, and then they ended up arguing over a DC character. <laughs> Doggone it. Dag right. nab it. There Fuck. we go. I got, I got three lists here. Boom, shoot, and then I'll do here, my thing. Here is the death list. Death list. They're doing the death list. Uh, of all the people that died? Yes. All right, hit me with your best shot. Okay, Loki. Loki. Himdall. Himdall. Gamora. Gamora. Vision. Yep. Very good riddance as far as I'm concerned. His last out, his last outing wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, Black Panther. Uh, that was a surprise. Yeah. Scarlet Witch. 
Doctor Strange, another surprise. Guy yeah. that barely anybody <laughs> barely got to know him. Bucky, Falcon, which again, as Ryan stated, I was way wrong because I going off the yeah. comics. One of those should have picked up the shield. Mm. Hey, there's no shield to pick up. <laughs> uh, Star Lord. Oh, yeah. Man. Pretty much all of the Guardians. Groot, Drax, Mantis. Yet. Yeah. I think uh, I think Rocket's the only one that survived of yep. the Guardians. Spider Man. Ah, uh, don't remind me. Uh, Spider Man. <laughs> you said it twice, you uh, asshole. Maria Hill. Mariah. Nick Fury, which oh my god. I took that harder than Spider-Man. <laughs> You're an ass. You know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> and of course, the uh, the Black Order. Corvus Glaive, Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, and Call Obsidian. Now, here's who lived. Captain America. Not Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> I'm going to kick you right in the nuts. <laughs> Iron Man. Thor. Black Widow. The Hulk. Seeing a pattern here, folks? The original Avengers. Um, Rhodes. James Rhodes. War Machine. Rocket. Yeah, the la- yeah. last Guardian. Nebula. Okoye. M'Baku. So I'm just going by the movies. Yeah. Okay. And Shiri. That's who I know is still alive. This is my MIA question mark, question mark, question mark list. All right. Pepper Potts. Oh. Yeah. Hawkeye. Ant-Man. And their families. Hawkeye and, and their families. Yeah. The Collector. Now, the reason I put Collector on here is because we, we saw him in the movie, but Thanos was using the Reality Stone, and mm-hmm. there was never any confirmation. And I'm hoping he's still alive because I need to see a scene with the next one on my list, the Grandmaster. <laughs> I need to see those two together. <laughs> Uh, Valkyrie and Korg. Yes. We never saw them. Yeah, we didn't see them. At the end of Ragnarok, beginning of this movie, where were Valkyrie and Korg? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Wong, as last time we saw him. He was going back back to the Sanctum. Yep. Um, My man Ned. (laughs) Ned. Ned, 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 Ned. Oh, yeah. I need a distraction. Yeah. We're all going to die. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a giant space donut. Um, Idri. Um, Kraglin. We didn't see him. The one dude, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. The skinny little dude at the end of Guardians 2 where he's trying to use Yondo's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he's with the Guardians, but we never saw him. Mm-hmm. Um, the the original Guardians, Stallone, the Ravagers, Stallone and his group. Yeah. Um, oh my God. The Nova Corps. I uh, mean, we saw the fact that, like, when we were introduced in this movie, he had the Power Stone, which was left last time we saw it was at the Nova Corps. Oh yeah. We never saw it. It was off screen. How many of them survived? Who survived? If any of them. You know what I mean. And my last one. And more importantly, who I think will end up defeating Thanos, if I had my way about it, Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Oh, and Coulson, because I watch Agents yes. of Shield. So, and Coulson is the bridge between the shows and the movies. Yes, <laughs> but Howard the Duck. <laughs> Forgot about him. See that? But they're all technically my list. My three lists right here are in the MCU. Yeah, they're all in the movies. Yeah. That's why I'm saying Guardians 3. I was like, oh, they can't die. They're going to bring him back. They're going to bring him back. They've announced uh, Black Panther 2. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2. And Guardians 3. Mm-hmm. What's to say that they set him up? It yeah. could be, you know, Rocket is the bridge. And we get Stallone and the original Guardians. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? or, or like you were saying, uh, we don't know where the timeline, the timeline is. They could be leaving their latest mission to go check out the distress signal, mm-hmm. or Spider-Man's, le- you know, number two could be. It ends with him the, on a field on the, trip on the bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that dude needs to stop going on field trips because shit keeps happening. <laughs> you, you saw what happened at the monument, <laughs> and you 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 destroyed Washington's erection. I mean monument. 
<laughs> no, I think you were right the first time. <laughs> and it's of not course, n- uh, nearly as big as the Clinton Monument. <laughs> that's Monica. <laughs> And, of course, Black Panther 2, which made all the money. Mm-hmm. Who's to say, because uh, uh, we got two fan favorites from the first one. Yeah. M'Baku and Shiri. And in the comics, as you will know. What about Nokia? Oh, Okoye? Yes. That would be that would be awesome. Um, She's rocking a samurai sword, like, you know, a little Walking Dead. Nokia, Nokia was his, uh... That's his... Spy girlfriend. She was working oh, as a... Oh, you're talking... Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, she wasn't in the movie either. Yeah. I don't I, like you her. know, two of the uh, Black Panther's leading character people, uh, Siri and Nokia, have phone names. <laughs> <laughs> well, they invented Holy them. shit, they invented them. They did. <laughs> remember, the, remember the line... Now, now I, I could just start quoting lines with the... Uh, I call them sneakers. Now, I'm talking about this one. It was like, when you said you were opening Wakanda up to the world, this is not what I expected. What were you expecting? Hosting the Olympics. Maybe a Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I was rolling. Yeah, that was funny. That. <laughs> uh, all right, so I have some comic book stuff. Kind of educate yeah. you a little bit more on the character of Thanos. Uh, originally... Uh, so he died in the comics before the Infinity War in the comic. Uh, and he was brought back by death. Because she needed a favor. And Thanos is in love with and worships death. And since he's so whipped, he was going to do her this favor. <laughs> she is the one that told him about the imbalance of the universe. How planets were dying out. Because they were overpopulated. So she was like, hey, uh, bro, uh, if you do this for me, I might do something for you, but probably not. You know, like a girl that wants a favor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, you're not. <laughs> uh, no. She uh, uh, told him this, and he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. While he's like, yeah, if I do this, she'll be super impressed, and she'll finally love me the way I love her. So basically, Thanos tries to kill half the universe so he can get in Death's robe. I was going to say pants. Pants. But I was, well, like, was going to say, like, you're not kidding because a, a friend in need is a pest and a girl in need is a terrorist. <laughs> uh, and you know you're going to do that favor no matter what it is. I do have a th- list of three people who have defeated Thanos. Yes. Uh, the first one, not a character any of you movie watchers have officially seen, unless you test your bladder to the end of end credit scenes, Adam Warlock. <laughs> Guardians 2. Yes, he is the end credit character at, of Guardians 2. Uh, <laughs> one of, he, he's basically Superman. He's like the Superman of Marvel, all powerful, like, he... he He's uh, what what's the the term I'm looking for? A power uh, incarnate. Yeah, well, he's a uh, supernova. Fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Deus ne- He's a Deus ex machina. Okay, okay. Uh, he could very easily, especially in the movies, he could very easily be used as a Deus ex machina. Just like they're like, all right, and boom, problem fixed. Okay. That'd be terrible writing on their part, but they could do it if they felt lazy. Uh, because I, I like to pander to the fans as well as tell them to fuck off. I tell you to fuck off, but I also want to pander to you. Uh, the next one on the list, Deadpool. Yes. Deadpool has beat Thanos. That's your pandering part. Yes. I know how much the, the fans love Deadpool. I think he's okay. Uh, but he's kind of annoying sometimes, if I'm being honest. Howard the Duck did it first. Uh, yes, he fought Thanos. Uh, you know, he didn't kill him all with his own power, but, uh, he got, like, some cosmic power stuff, and that's what he used to defeat Thanos. Uh. I like when he irritates Thanos rather than fights his Thanos. Exi- <laughs> all right, so, so, we, I, I have told you that Thanos loves death, but you know who death's banging behind Thanos' back? <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> They're 
<laughs> bumping skeletons. He's got a Sancho on the side. <laughs> and so the real reason that even though Wade Wilson has that healing factor, uh, he finally dies and uh, Thanos is like, oh, hold up, hold up. He's going to be spending more time with death now that he's actually dead. Not anymore. And he curses Deadpool so he can never die. Mm -hmm. For a time. I mean, they probably changed it. You never know what's going to happen in comics. I'm di I'm, I'm digressing. Uh, I get a little... You know us. We get sidetracked. And the third one, who I think really earned his right to uh, kill Thanos. Drax. Oh. Drax has, in fact, killed Thanos before. Or beat Thanos. Uh, and he did it Mortal Kombat style. Punched right through his back and pushed his heart out of his chest while it was still beating. Fatality. Drax, yeah. Very underrated character. I'll tell you what, though. Dave Batista. He's doing a good job as Drax. Oh, I'm a wrestling fan, and, and this is the best thing I've ever seen him do. <laughs> I mean, I can't stand the guy until I saw him as... You know what's funny? Like... <laughs> Well, I guess I can't call them modern day wrestlers anymore because they're all kind of past their prime as far as wrestling goes. Are making, are doing a lot better in other aspects of work. Like The Rock and Batista and John Cena are all actors now. I mean, technically, John Cena is more of a meme lord. I can't, I can't really uh, say anything. I can't about say John, John Cena. I can't, I, 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 didn't, I didn't say he was a good actor. I've never seen him in anything. <laughs> So uh, I can't, I can't. But, yeah, they're all actors now. Like, these are the people that, when I was, you know, a preteen age, and I, like, would catch, you know, pro wrestling matches on TV, like, you know, WWE and whatnot. These are the people I saw. Well, this is the thing I'm talking about. It's like, I'm a, I was a huge wrestling fan all the time. And I loved it. How excited were you to see Andre the Giant and the Princess Bride? <laughs> Super excited. <laughs> but you know what else I was excited about? Is like I, the good old days. Back in my day. <laughs> when people would like... Use chisels it, to write? No, no. Not, at the risk of sounding like, like a, a hipster or anything like that. I liked it before wrestling was like in the mall. In Hot Topic. You know yeah. what I mean? I used to like it. I miss... I didn't know it at the time. But I missed the days where... Like, my friend, what did you do last night? Oh, I went to a wrestling match in, in the sports arena. That shit's fake. You're a dummy. I'm like, okay, um, what's your favorite movie? Blah, blah, blah. Shit's you know, that's fake. not real either, right? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> so I guess that's like, you know, it's a springboard for acting. Yeah. Somebody should have told Hogan that in the 80s, but. <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't seen a good Hogan movie. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy The Rock. I can't say anything about John Cena. He's uh he he's not the best actor, but he gives it his all. I saw him. I can't actually. I take that back. I saw him as a drug dealer in one movie. I can't remember. It, it was a bit part. I mm -hmm. want to say horrible bosses, maybe. Maybe he was the drug dealer. He showed up. And he was like all the the enforcer or whatever. But Austin, I love Steve Austin, Stone Cold, yeah, and Expendables. He was a great bad guy. Yeah. But that's the only thing I can... I mean, I can't really say anything. Anyway, I dug it yes. <laughs> So those are those are three people that have uh, killed or beaten Thanos. Uh, Adam Warlock turned him to stone. Deadpool melted his face off with cosmic energy. And Drax ripped out his fucking heart. Drax, very underrated. Much like Thanos has done to him time and time again. Not literally, but like emotionally by killing his family and... There was Stuff. a story arc where, in the comics, where it was Venom, Hulk, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Tony Stark. And during the chaos, a piece of the symbiote suit from Venom got on the Hulk. Mm -hmm. Drax stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Venom Hulk. Wow. Very underrated character. Very funny character in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> like I said earlier, I... I don't particularly care. He's funny in the same way that, like, uh, early on Thor is by not understanding earthling culture, except Drax takes everything. He's literal. Literally. He's a literal being to the point where I said. That joke just went right over your head. Nothing will go over my head. My <laughs> reflexes are too. 
quick. Dave Batista should get an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in Guardians 2. <laughs> I was dying every time I saw him. <laughs> I've trained myself to stand oh, so yeah. perfectly still <laughs> that I'm imperceptible to the eye. You're eating a nougat, but I'm moving so slowly. I'm, I'm invisible. Then I'm pretty sure I'm invisible. Hi, Drax. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> how long, dude, how long have you been standing there? A, one hour. An hour? <laughs> Just, oh. <laughs> he, uh, he's Drax the Destroyer, and he's just raised the bar on voyeurism. <laughs> I mean, Destroyer and Bar Razor. I wonder how much longer he could have stood there if he just didn't need to eat those uh, nougats. I didn't know he was eating them. I, I bought it. I bought it, Drax. <laughs> you like, wait, Drax was in that scene? Yeah, I didn't see him. I didn't see him at all. Oh, so funny. Um, Other, any, any final thoughts? Um, three favorite scenes. If you could pick your three favorite scenes from that movie. Um, 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 uh, don't copy me. <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> my number one scene, apparently. Yeah, you go, you go first. I'll, I'll think about it. All right. My number, I'm going to go in ascending order. My number three was probably, Jesus, I can't pronounce this. The fight between Dr. Strange and Thanos. Mm-hmm. Where he had the, uh, which they used a lot of, which was awesome because I was kind of a little disappointed. The crimson bands of oh Cinerac. yeah yeah that stuff was cool. Oh my god! And then the 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 my beyond Christeliosis. I can't pronounce it for me. The the when he turns into the uh, the Hindu demigod. Oh yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then, then sends then, off the little clone things. And there's like thousands of them around. That was. I, mean, you, I, I don't need, know if you heard me. I, I hear, need I to get some more Doctor Strange. Oh, dude, I love Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. I love Doctor Strange. I, sp- I really liked his that recent run. I bought one of the books from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one looks cool. But when he did that, I don't know if you heard me. I still did it like the fourth time I saw the movie. Yes, and he's yes. like, <laughs> he's going toe to toe, and straight or uh, Thanos was a little uh, taken aback. My number two. Was as I call it the girl power scene, where you had Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, and Okoye teaming up, which I think should be the next movie, <laughs> <laughs> and fighting uh, Proxima Midnight. Yeah. And, oh my God, that was so badass! Like that one scene where she's up there the whole time. The Scarlet Witch finally hits the uh, the battlefield, mm-hmm. and she takes out all those drill giant tank things that yeah. they had. And Okoye goes. Whose idea was it to leave her up there watching? <laughs> <laughs> that was so badass. And my number one, which I'm sure, which I've seen more and more on YouTube and everything, the re- audience reactions when Thor, Rocket, and Groot hit Earth yeah. with Stormbreaker. <laughs> yeah, that one. I I have to say that one is definitely on my list. The first well. time I saw the movie, I'm reaching. I'm looking at my wife and my son, and I'm like. Because you have all the outriders, those alien, the four-armed mm-hmm. alien things that are just rabid. They're just mindless beasts to destroy. And they're just, like, overtaking. I'm like, now would be a good time for fucking Thor to stop fucking around and show up here. Because this is his kind of fight. The minute I said that, <laughs> I, you just see it. And then the he Bifrost can, opens up. That's the thing with Stormbreaker. He could create his own Bifrost. Yeah. Oh. And he shows up at just that big... Uh, just starts messing everybody up and taking everybody out, yeah. you know. And then he's like, "Bring me Thanos." And you see, group. <laughs> Put the video game down for once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then Rocket. And then oh, that, that start, scene and, where where Winter Soldier picks him up and they spin around. <laughs> that was. I want to see that movie. I want to see the 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 girl power team up. And I want to see a Winter Soldier rocket movie. <laughs> every he wakes up in the middle of the night every night. Quit trying to steal my arm. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah, the jokes. <laughs> we already touched upon the one-liners, but those are my three favorites. Uh, I couldn't agree more on that. That that 
Thor, the that, Thor yeah. hits, yeah, Thor brings Stormbreaker to Earth. That's a great scene. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, gosh, it's so hard to pick. You know I'm not good at this kind of thing. Well, I was just saying because, again, I have the advantage a little bit because I'd seen the movie numerous times. I kept looking over at you. I'm just, like, your reactions. Obviously, Red Skull was... Well, you know I'm like <laughs> Wallpaper. Yeah, I know you kind of, no, not this time, not this time. <laughs> well, I verbally, I verbally announced my reactions most of the time. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> or you know, yeah, your laughter, which didn't see that coming. <laughs> the laughter, was yeah. The... <laughs> my 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 evil villain laugh echoed throughout that near empty <laughs> movie theater. Which, thank you, by the way, if my buddy's listening, Bill, he knows. Uh, Music. We're trying to do a remix. I need to get a, at least a sixty-second thing of your laugh, <laughs> and we're gonna dub it over. <laughs> <laughs> the in, the two-minute ending music. <laughs> we want to put the laugh. In. It was his idea. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Fuck! Why haven't I thought of that? <laughs> um. Another scene that I really, really liked is another Thor Groot rocket scene. And it's when uh, they make Stormbreaker and Groot sac- it, like makes him the handle out of his own arm. And it just like falls to the floor and you see Thor's fingers start to electrify. He saved Thor's life yeah. in, in a sense. I mean, like, well, not in a sense, literally. Yeah. Like Draxley. <laughs> um, yeah. And what about... I, I, I saw you kind of light up there when uh, Tony, Tony called for the uh, the TS-17. And Peter's like up on the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I know you're a Spider-Man fan. He's going up into space. He's like... Uh. <laughs> uh, and... All right. So my the last one... I'm Mine's not in any order, really. Hmm. Uh the last one I would say is one of, during the fight with Thanos when Spider-Man was going in and out of the magic portals. Magic. <laughs> magic again. Magic with a kick. I forgot about that one. I forgot about <laughs> Magic from behind. You know, there's another one you just made me think about. It was kind of like almost a uh, background scene. Again, like uh, I've seen it so many times. When we first meet the Guardians and they're... Uh, answering the distress call from yeah. the Asgardian ship. It's like, all right, people, and they're discussing, it's like, how's, it, how's this going to go? Well, it depends on them. It's like, all right, we're coming in, people. Put on your mean faces. If you look behind and notice Mantis, Mantis is adorable to me. I think. Put on your mean faces. She literally, and she just stays that way. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> and she's doing the mean face the whole time. Like, she's like, like frozen there. <laughs> and, Remember when they were sneaking up on Thanos yeah. in, in nowhere? And nobody... Did you notice Mantis? She's doing the literally the Scooby-Doo tiptoe. <laughs> what the... Yeah. Mantis is definitely another character that nobody just kind of like looks over. But you're looking at the little subtleties. She's a character that's like literally been getting stepped on oh. a little bit though. <laughs> so Mantis! Cool. Watch out! Yeah. It's a superhero pose. <laughs> she gets creamed. Oh, that's hilarious. Let's see. All right. Um, are we, uh, are we, are... We're, we're at just about the hour mark. And I've, I'm spent on my notes. I've got... I've only got one more thing for the for the listeners. Yes. And you can put it in the comments. Preferably in the comments. Yes, in the comments. Don't te- don't text me. Don't text Ryan. Don't per- PM. I mean, you can, you can text me. I mean, I have very few friends. If you, <laughs> and he's tired of listening to me. Wait, you, I'm not even on his friends list. <laughs> I've given you four choices, people. Put in the comments. They may not be your favorites, but if you had to choose, if you've seen this movie, who would be your favorite between Spider-Man, Nick Fury, Doctor Strange, or T'Challa, who is the Black Panther. Leave it in the comments. Let us know. Oh, and here's the picture. (laughs) 
please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, have a day!